watching The Producer's Room, a streaming web series featuring the creators behind the hit songs of today's music industry. Songwriters, music producers, and artists discuss their creative process as well as examining current issues and technologies in today's rapidly changing music business. Your host is producer, songwriter, and educator, Dave Tuff. Welcome to The Producer's Room. Cool. So we're taking a tour. Yeah. And uh, so first of all, like I was asking you, these these drum mics are like sticking out to me. That's like some unusual stuff. So what do you got on the hi hat here? Uh, this is an old AKG. Uh, I think D twenty. Yeah. What they call it. Yeah. Um, Beatles used to use them as overheads cool. or whatever, cool. but it's a pretty low-fi mic. I don't really like the high crisp yeah. hi hat yeah. thing. So we try to use these are old fifties uh, Zildjian's and. Nice, yeah. And uh, just a lo-fi mic. Sometimes I'll swap it out for the uh, the AKG yeah. if we need something a little bit brighter. But they call them a bullet mic. But Turner was a, a lectern company. They made caskets for yeah. funeral homes, and uh, and started making their own PA's for the you know uh, what do you call it when the wake when someone <laughs> yeah, dies. Right, right. And so. That's an old Turner wow, mic, probably from the thirties or forties. It's real crunchy sounding, so yeah. And then uh, for snare top, I didn't get that one. Uh, uh, there's a fifty-seven, and then this old Altec six thirty-three. This is what most people know as the salt shaker. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a, there's a guy named Jakir King. Yeah, who's a buddy of mine that uh, taught me this, but it's basically um, just a little more light, lo fi a little punchier than uh -huh. the, the fifty-seven. And so it's one of those things that it may or may not work right, for the song. Right. Or maybe we use them both and sum mm -hmm. them together. Yeah, no, that's uh, great, man. There's a lot of snares that um, you could buy that do a lot of a range of things. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd rather have just like the, the particular, uh -huh. you know, like this has one great sound and that's what we're going to use it for. So, But they all have a different tone and, and it's kind of our job here at the studio to know when we're talking with the musicians or the artists, like, when they make a reference to say, okay, right. we can take this snare and tune it this way. Sure. And, and we're, we work on that stuff all the time when they're not here. Yeah, yeah, you got some so. old school stuff too, like yeah. marching drums, and that's cool, man. I've got a couple of little keyboard worlds set up. Yeah. And um, So what's here besides that? Uh, some Moog stuff? I can't see that. Or is so it just... uh, there's Nord and then just a couple of mo like uh, yeah. modular synth rack kind of things. Uh, the MS-2000 and a JP-80. Uh, 8080 and uh, let's see is that a Yamaha C I don't know what that is that now. is uh, CP70 CP70 I know it's right this old Peter Gabriel thing yeah um, I think Keen used it uh -huh. and that kind of brought it back into fashion but cool you know just a bunch of different options when bands come in um, and like when I'm writing uh, when the artist comes in they may have brought a guitar or something but I just tell them to kind of spend some time going around the studio and yeah. seeing if if anything kind of speaks to them. Sure. We don't really know what this is, but it's kind of just a, this crazy little. Uh, oh, wow. You know, it's got the. Yeah. Oh, that whole deal. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. You just make whatever you want out of it. <laughs> wow. I'm impressed. It's got a mind of its own. Yeah, yeah that's great, man. I don't even know how to stop it. That's an SM69. SM yeah, so and solid state. This placement, yeah, it's a FET mic. Yeah. The, uh, so I got this mic because I loved it on acoustic guitar. Yeah. And I, and I uh, usually will sit an artist down here because uh -huh. it's got a nice stereo image. And one day I was cutting guitar on the couch and I got done and I lifted the mic over my head to about where it is right now. Yeah. And the, a drummer was sitting at the kit and he started playing and they hadn't turned it off in my phones. Uh -huh. And it was like, what is that sound? It's Magic amazing. Spot, yeah. And what it was is because I was sitting here playing, it was two cardioid capsules pointed this way, and they were hitting the glass on ah, the two doors. So it's a nice. brighter reflection. Yeah. And it just kind of became a thing that became part of my drum sound after that. How come? And then you got the chimes. And, yeah. and I was asking you, you seem like one of those guys, I mean, you have the real instrument. You're probably not going to use samples unless you absolutely have to, right? I mean, yeah, I know. the real <laughs> instrument. I, I like, you know, the, the one thing that has been lacking in the sample world to me is when stuff is uh, 
not quite perfect. You know, right, it's like on right. those chimes, a couple of them are kind of not uh -huh. quite in tune. Uh -huh. The thing rattles when you hit it. It's got a personality. You know? Exactly. And then, okay, so then we heard you play an organ on that Gabe tune. Yeah. This is probably over here, right? And so yeah, you got a the B3. B3. And then another crazy uh, Is that like a ball <laughs> It's know. kind of like a fun machine yeah, kind yeah. of vibe. Uh, Some synths I haven't that But made by tone. Hammond. Yeah, it's an old, it's like a the Jaguar kind of sound. Yeah, yeah. Um, or a Vox Continental, right, that kind of right. thing. And then the Rhodes. So this is your main piano ISO here. Yeah. You've got the... The grand. So yeah, this is a Yamaha C7. It was actually here when I purchased the studio in 09 and and they had never taken the felt the plastic off the felts from wow. the factory. So it's like I had a brand new <laughs> piano to work with. So I called Nicky Chavez yeah. from Intune Music and he came in and just revoiced the piano and worked on all the, the hammers where it's really open and uh beautiful sounding uh piano and we're always changing mics out but yeah i was gonna ask you what these right now we have two telefunken m260s are those the new ones yeah yeah and they're cool because they they have the different capsules so if we want a really tight sound we'll do the cardioid yeah but a lot of times omni will kind of capture uh -huh. a little bit more of a round kind of sarah mclaughlin yeah. kind of tone and then in the center i keep a uh, that's a rca 74b and I've kind of got it slammed. Is that uh, is that uh, like the sister to the seventy seven? Because I don't. I'm, this is a. It's like a forty four, but in a smaller size. Okay. That's and uh, yeah. and we've got it going through an old two pre and a compressor in there, and so you get a nice stereo image with these clean mics, and then we'll pull that up in yeah. the middle just to kind of round Some out the tone. And, I'm gonna get this mic on your upright too. I don't know what this is too. This yeah. Is interesting looking too. This is I've mic'd this with literally everything. And, <laughs> The best. This is my baby. This is what I write on most of the time. Really? Nice. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is a SM2. Really? So it's got two of the uh, AC701 tubes uh -huh. that are kind of rare and hard to find, but it's a beautiful sounding mic. And something about just being like this in the center of the piano yeah. is the best combo that I've found. That's great, man. I, I don't even think I've ever seen that. You know, I've seen like XY above something, but the front right. wasn't off, and that's that probably does sound amazing. I mean, we've mic'd the back yeah. of this thing, yeah. and you know, the yeah. bottom and the top, and this just has the best stereo image. Yeah, that's and, cool. Uh, and and, and, and why we're here, let's just show the cues over there, too. Obviously, yeah. you have like a more me for everyone. Yeah, and, you uh, know, these change all the time. But Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, that's great. The thing is... Um, there's a couple of normal acoustic guitars that have different tones, like a Martin and a Gibson or whatever, but then a lot of this stuff is um, just just like the drums over there, right. the guitars that are set up for a certain thing, like this is a high strung sound. Ah, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. You know, it's not yeah. a tune. But, right. Um, baritones, uh, there's a four string tenor over there. Uh, nice. This is kind of cool. This is a, I used to be the pawn shop guy, <laughs> and I found this. And I have no idea How's it stuck if I can here? even get it out, but... Yeah, uh, there you go. I have no idea what kind of guitar it is, but it had these cool birds yeah, on man. it. And, uh, yeah. Everything's out of tune. <laughs> That's all right, man. That's uh, the nature of the... But, yeah, yeah. just different options. Uh, yeah, classical, man, different tones. And then some bass guitars and the vibraphone and pedal steel, just kind of... Crazy. Let musicians kind of dig around and find yeah, what they man. like. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to focus in. Great. Okay. Um, this is like no one's allowed to touch this except <laughs> the guys that work at the studio because it's a dangerous situation. Ah. Like, all the amps come in here and then all the speaker cabs come in here, and so it works like a normal patch bay. But, but the impedances could be different or whatever. Right. Like. So we all have marked what each cab is rated at and. You got to be really smart about making right. sure that you're not putting a load on an amp that doesn't have a, uh, or that all the amps need to be yeah. loaded. Yeah. But it really has cut a lot of time down for us in the studio, and we end up using more of the stuff because it's easy to get to. And it took a long time to kind of figure out. Right. How to make it all work, but. I mean, this uh, is probably like everything else. You got to tone for it. Looks like about every every yeah, style. Yeah, man. Of and you know, some bands will come in and they'll have like. The guitar player will have an orange amp and it sounds fantastic. 
but we want to add yeah another color, color to it so we'll come in here and so what so i still see a lot of rare pieces i've never seen before like what is this rca thing or what is this selmer uh, thing this selmer this is this was called the little giant uh and it's kind of like uh their take on you know the fender uh pro junior but yeah. this would have been way back in the yeah uh, the 60s. Some are made like the band instruments. Right, yeah, the saxophones. But they made this. This is one of my favorite amps in the whole oh, world. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, That's a big Selmer. This is called the Zodiac. A couple of these are a, a guy named uh, John Tyler who makes Tyler uh -huh. amps. Great, like, hand-wired um, clones of a lot of the amps from yesterday that some kids just don't have access right, to anymore. Right, right. So this is his Princeton copy, and it's just fantastic. Uh, real deal. Amp. And so what cab do you match that with? Uh, um, a lot of times I'll run it through this divided by 13 cab. Okay, okay. Um, he, he makes his own cabs. We've got a couple in the other room that are great too. The That divided has my favorite uh, speaker combination in it, which is like a, a greenback and a uh, the blue Celestion. Uh, so you just move the mic depending on which one yeah. you want to go for. Yeah, in fact, we have this mic mover that there's oh. a controller in the other room. No, you're and, spoiled. <laughs> yeah. A uh, buddy of mine named Jerry McPherson make, made this. You know, powerful. when you work with bands, it's like right, just right. trying to have the right sound. I've just collected these over the years. Yeah, this is so. my desert island. Uh, the the, the uh, Electro Harmonics yeah. Memory Man. Yeah. The ones that they made with the AC cable nice. coming out of them in the 90s and early 2000s. Just have a, yeah. a thing to them. That's... Uh. That's my favorite. My favorite vocal mic that we have here at the studio is probably this. Uh, I've got a pair of these bottle mics wow. that have the the different capsules from different eras. And, um, so when you is that the blue? The kind blue? Of copied that. But they, that's the actual CMV. That's the or yeah. The, if you if no you way. zoom in on it, like everything's in. Uh, oh my gosh. German. So this would be the M9, which is like the Omni capsule, and you can Crazy. just pop them off. That's what's on there right now. Um, and I, I just love the character that it has on a vocal mic. Oh, I'm and, sure, man. Uh, down here, we just keep a lot of, like, really just interesting sounding, yeah. you know, kind of crappy mics uh, that you never know. Like, uh, I think this is it. Um, there's a, yeah, there's a House of Heroes record that one of the lead vocals, <laughs> he just stood with this going into an amp, and it had a thing, so... We yeah. just kind of did it. What does it? Because that has a quarter inch output to it. Or? Yeah, we put oh, one oh. on there. Yeah, yeah. and uh, just crank the amp and hope for the best. You know, this is if we're not going to use the coals, especially if the drummer's uh, doing a drum pass that doesn't have a ride cymbal. Yeah, I like to put this mic up, um, but it's a Bang and Olsen. Uh, I think it's a BM5, and it, what's cool is it's it's. Uh, a stereo mic, but you can move the. So that's condenser or ribbon. I'm it's sure. this is a ribbon. Okay. It's a stereo ribbon mic, and this one's been modded uh, with that cloud lifter. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So immediately it's hitting a preamp, so it kind of cleans the mic up just a little bit, but it sounds fantastic right in the middle of the drum kit. Yep. Okay. Now into the control room. Did we scare off all your staff? Are they <laughs> gone home? Yeah, they're the... gone. Oh, we got to get the sitar right here, Jackie. Yeah. We'll get the sitar and the timpani. You know, you the can't. The sitar has seen better days. <laughs> it, uh, we we also get the pickup installed, though. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I actually admirable. used this on a tour with a band called DC Talk. Ah, uh, man, that's nice. In the early 2000s, but it took a fall on stage uh, from that. So it's mostly there just for, for, you know, wishing us all good luck before we walk into the studio. The marching bass drum and oh, yeah. all that. Nice. So this is the second, well, I should say that the two thirds, there's more over there, but this is an exciting half. So yeah. control room. And then, like you said, when you moved in here, was it mainly treated? Everything was treated? Or? Everything I was treated. It was just vibeless. Too. Yeah, vibeless. Uh, it just looked like a, a dental office in here. <laughs> and so. Nice. But the, the bones of the room were good and the wiring was right. Yeah. And this is a magnesink tube yeah. mixer. So it's just a little four That's a input. That's a new thing? Ever? No, this oh. was like, uh, this would probably be 50s. Okay, wow. Same with this. It's like a Magnusink reel-to-reel. -reel. Okay. Um, yeah. So we'll just 
put a bunch of drum mics into this and distort them and see how they sound. Okay, and kind yeah. of blow things up. So right now, whatever the last thing we do, we have the bullet mic in there. But it's it is a semi mixer. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it has a master out. I see. Yeah. Yep. So these are the BL forties. Um, this was designed in radio stations for the DJ. So when they talk, the music, you know, ducks. Oh, like a ducker. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and originally, like you see all these extra holes. They didn't want anybody messing with them once they got installed, so they had uh, screw trim pots that you'd have uh -huh. to use a tweaker for. And so they've been modded to have pots in the front, and then there was this uh, one circuit that you have to take out, and then basically you have an LA3 and an 1176 in one box. Oh, wow. And just the way that they both hit the vocal, you can get one of them to hit the transient, and then the other one to kind of add character. Yeah, oh yeah. They're my favorite vocal compressors. Really? These are dual graphics there. Yeah. The, above the API is the custom summing mixer that we built. This guy? Yeah. Kind of in-house, out of parts. So when you're using these summing mixers, you're like this one or that one, your drum, drum mics? Your well, drum th this is definitely for character for drums. Okay. That guy is, we. I love combining mics on guitar cabs. Okay, so. right. Oh, here it is. Uh, 34128 is the name of the module and, okay. um, and when I got it we had it modded for direct out so we basically use it as 8 preamps even though the master section does work and we can use yeah. it from time to time for summing or whatever. But what makes you still go through a console I should ask you. I mean, We talk about this all the time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Nowadays. In, in tracking uh, just the, the flexibility this, this console yeah. has uh, for all the stuff that we've got plugged up in the studio, it's just a lifesaver. Yeah. In mixing, um, it, it's my favorite sound from you right. know, all my favorite records. You right, know? exactly. Uh, I'm a 90s kid that grew up on 90s rock and all the guys were using this back then. For me, I still hear a width and a depth yeah. through a console. That, yeah. And two, I'm, I like touching things. Right. When I'm working on a desk, it's like you grab the fader to to manipulate the sound instead of grabbing a mouse. Yeah, yeah. So you like these Dyn Audios too, or are those Dyn Audios? Uh, they yeah, are. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, they're kind of just the when the band comes in, you right. high five right. each other. Yeah. But I'm an NS10 guy in terms of when I when I actually sit down cool. to critique something. Yeah, awesome. So yeah, Guitar World. There's a couple of faves. <laughs> this is my uh, yeah my number one. I found this in Minneapolis years ago at a music go around and it's just been around the world with me on Crazy. tours and yeah uh great sound and peace definitely uh my favorite but you know it's like the snare thing and the acoustic guitar thing we were talking about everything's got right. its own particular right. tone right if it doesn't get used it gets sold and something else will exactly. end up in its place so you guys uh how often would you say you track to take man if I'm doing a record and it has drums and bass on it, okay. we're using the tape machine. <laughs> nice. Um, I, it's not only just a sound thing, it's also the, how it drives the workflow right, and the musicians. Right. right. Uh, everybody just kind of sits on their seat a little bit higher and they say, I can't mess this up. Right. It messes everybody else up, you know? And it I just, agree. It just drives the whole process differently. So. This is where the staff goes to get away from me. <laughs> they try to hide in here and I have to come find them. But this is Studio B. It's got Zach's console in here and uh, we do a lot of extraneous stuff like editing and vocal adjustments and, and then it's their cave. Yeah. So this is the plate. Yeah, man. Kind of went all out. So you guys looked at plans for like a 140 or? Yeah, we. I, I looked at the plans for 140 and found the exact width and the measurements of the steel and found several places in Nashville that would cut it for us and they would always ask, well, how many of these do you need? And I would say one. And they'd say, well, we don't do less than, yeah. you know, a thousand or whatever. We found one guy that was nice enough to give us one and then we framed it and built the electronics. Wow. And, uh, and then this little contraption to the dampener or? it to adjust the time so yeah. it goes from about 0.5 to around and did you guys just experiment seconds. with that till you got the right materials yeah. and all that? wow if the, if the guys were in here right now they'd be laughing because it was <laughs> like you know we do it in between me working and it probably took four to six months to kind of get it all figured out 
But I use it all the time now. It's a great sound and play. Nice. And, uh, Case room and all that. Well, I think we did we go through? Did yeah, we go through? this is it, man. All right. <laughs>